So happy to have Jared Wallace, Paralympic medalist, here with us in track and field. How are you? I'm doing awesome. You've it's had been a busy year. Yeah, you've had a whirlwind. <laughs> I was going to say a busy year and a busy 24 hours. You're just back from Washington, D.C., yeah. where all Paralympians and Olympians were together to celebrate. Yeah, it was such an amazing experience. It was the very first time that they had both summer and winter sports together since both uh, competitions happened so close together. We uh, did a combined White House trip. So that's never happened before. It may never happen again. Um, um, but a pretty special uh, event to be a part of. Yeah, so the Summer Olympians like yourself and Paralympians got to meet meet the Winter Olympians. You got to see Alana Myers-Taylor, yes. two of our, our big, you know, Atlanta <laughs> Atlanta Olympians. Absolutely, yeah. It was one of those things that, you know, you, as as a you know Paralympian and summer sport athlete, you know we love watching our you know winter sport counterparts compete, and we don't ever get to really meet them or see them at all, versus maybe just following them on social media. So it was really cool to be able to be there in person, shake some hands, take some photos, and uh, just get to know some of them on a personal level. Yeah, pretty impressive to see the big group together. Yeah, I saw a lot of uh, posts that had hashtag squad goals. <laughs> And it was like, yeah, this is this is an elite group right here of, of people. So that yeah, was a special, it's special like day. Epic squad goals. Yeah. <laughs> you brought your medal, which I I'm did. so happy to see in person. Yeah. I've only seen this over Zoom so far. So Check it's, this it's, thing it's out. way more fun to see Pretty this. Pretty cool. It's that, heavy. This was a, a big moment for you. It was, yeah. So this is the only medal that I hadn't been able to achieve in my career. Uh, Paralympics have been just kind of a hit and miss uh, event for me. So... Um, to be able to finally uh, check that off the, the list and, and bring home a bronze in the 200 was, was amazing. Uh, I think to like, just bittersweet, you know, being a dad, you know, now and, uh, you know, not having been a dad before in the other games. And, uh, you know, Levi, our son, came during uh, COVID and it was uh, an amazing kind of gift to have him during that season. Uh, brought so much joy to our family. Um, but then, you know, going to Tokyo was almost like my why got redefined. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was running for a little bit more than just myself. And um, it was special to be able to bring home that medal and let him wear it and, you know, run around the house and everything. So, yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Levi's not just watching his dad run now. He's, he's watching his dad jump, too. You're, <laughs> you're adding you're adding events, Jared. <laughs> I am. Yeah. So after uh, after Tokyo, I decided to come back and uh, drop the 200, focus on the 100 and then add in long jump. You know, I've made it to three games. Paris will be my fourth. Um, I probably will be my last. And so the last two and a half years of competition, I'm going to have a little fun. I'm going to play in the sand with my buddies. And uh, it's, a, it's definitely a different type of competition. The gamesmanship's a little bit different. Um, but I'm really excited to learn a new craft and, and, like I said, have a lot of fun the last couple years of my career. I love to hear you announce that. All right. Officially <laughs> training official. for, for <laughs> Paris 2024. You train, of course, at UGA with so many other incredible, yeah. incredible athletes that represent Team U. USA. Yeah. You have a lot of other passions too, yeah. and, and one is to give back through this race that is about to happen this weekend. Talk about talk about your involvement. Yeah, so there's an amazing uh, event called Wings for Life and an amazing organization called Wings for Life Foundation, and their, their mission and goal is to find a cure for spinal cord injuries. And we know with science that that is possible, and, and, it, and there is the potential for that to happen. Um, but they are the, just driving and leading that initiative. And I, the thing I love about that is, you know, there, there's a lot of organizations that are there to assist and help people that have spinal cord injuries, but they're, they've kind of taken it to the umpth degree and they're like, we're going to find a cure for this thing. And I, I just love that perspective and that um, passion and huge, huge goals. It just fits my, you know, my personality a lot. You know, I'm kind of just a big goal, big dream kind of guy. Um, and it lines in a lot with kind of some of the passion projects that I'm working on too. You know, I've um, been brought into the adaptive community about 12 years ago. I lost my leg. So I've lived a, a third of my life with an amputation. And um, I've seen a lot of need um, to help people become mobile. Uh, and, and so one of the things that I'm working on is trying to find a way to develop technology um, to be affordable and accessible to, to the population. So it's, it's amazing that you know, these, this organization fits so well into my passions off the track, but then you take their biggest fundraising event, which is a world run, which is what I love to do, and you put everything together. So um, it's been an honor to be a part uh, and an ambassador of the Wings for Life World Run, and um, we've got an amazing uh, event that they do every year on uh, May 8th here in Atlanta. We're hosting a in-person run, so just really excited about everything uh, around that. It's so cool, because the group that's gonna be running here in Atlanta this weekend will join runners literally from all around the world. It's such a neat way to 
to really bond for a common purpose. Totally. It's, you know, so they they have an app that's, um, you know, you basically log in and it's the only race in the world that doesn't have a finish line. So it's kind of this crazy concept where after the race starts, 30 minutes later, a, a chasing car, a catcher car co comes to catch you ultimately. So however fast you are, the faster you run, the further away from the catch car, the longer it's, you're going to be running for, mm -hmm. the longer the finish line is. So um, it's the only moving finish line, if you if you will, in the world, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it, once the car catches you, then you've, uh, you know, kind of finished the race. But um, you get to experience it in person if you choose to do that, or virtually uh, through the app with people all over the world. You know, for anyone who doesn't know your backstory, you're, we're, you know, an elite runner in Georgia before a, a, an injury that yeah. just wouldn't go away made you, you know, make a life choice yeah. to allow doctors to, to take your leg. Yeah. But I know you've talked about this megaphone that you have is, is maybe even bigger now to reach, to reinforce a message that means so much. Yeah, you know, I think that adversity brings perspective if you allow it, you know. Um, and so for me, I think, you know, in, in some sense, when I've lost my leg, I really gained my life. I gained perspective. I got brought into a community where I get to see the world maybe through a little different lens. And um, through those experiences, it's taught me a lot. And, um, you know, one of the things that I've been really passionate about is finding a way to um, leave, a le leave a legacy off the track, right? I mean, I think that as a, you know, Paralympian and as a professional athlete, you're always thinking about, well, I want to be in the record books. I want to have these medals. And those things are really great. But um, when I think about my legacy and I think about the things that I want people to remember me for, it's, it's creating opportunities and making a difference for people to ha maybe have the same experiences that I had, for, for people to be able to begin writing their own story. And um, again, I think that's where, you know, Wings for Life and my heartbeat for this organization is mm -hmm. so big is because that is their vision. They want to help people begin to rewrite their story or write a new chapter of, of their own story. Yeah, it's amazing. I was thinking about, you know, the moment you talked about being in the hospital and finally having peace saying, this is what I'm going to do to move forward yeah. to Washington, D.C., <laughs> celebrating with Team USA, uh, yeah. knowing that there's a, a more Olympic, Paralympic uh, days ahead for you. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. You know, I think if I look back to the 17 year old me and the plan I had for my life um, and then looking at the plan that God had for me and where I am now, it's, uh, it's been a joyful, humble experience and I couldn't imagine it being any other way. Do you have a, one snapshot that sticks out from your time in D.C.? Oh, man. Um, gosh, it was just so cool hanging out there. But there was so uh, Dustin Tavella, who won the uh, Amer America's Got Talent, the magician, oh, yes. was there and performed. <laughs> and it was the most mind-blowing performance. And then after, we, I was like out in the lobby, and he was like out there showing people how to do card tricks. So I literally was just like hanging out with this amazing magician, and he was the coolest, most down-to-earth, like humble dude. So that was like... I will never be able to experience something like that, like that ever again. So probably not like the most expected response, but Dustin Tavella crushed it and it was really cool to get to spend some time with him. That's so much fun. <laughs> all of us look up and ad admire all of you. I know that you respect each other. Yeah. Was there someone that you were really hoping to meet when you were with your Team USA counterparts? Totally, and, and I did. I got to meet her, Brittany Bowie, you know, the whole entire situation with Aaron slipping during the qualifiers and wasn't going to make the team, and Brittany gave her spot up for Aaron to go and compete, and then Aaron, you know, went and won a gold in, you know, in Beijing, and it was just a beautiful picture of, of sportsmanship and camaraderie and teamwork, and, um, you know, I, I think that, People look at sport and, and the competitors and, yeah, we want to win and we want to fight and we want to challenge, but um, that just showed so much about, A, who Brittany is as a, as a person, as a leader, as a teammate, but um, it just showed, like, you know what, like, we're here, yeah, to win medals, but we're also here to, to support each other and to create the best opportunities for each other and to represent Team USA, and, and Brittany knew that having Aaron on that team was going to be the best thing, so getting to give her a big hug and um, meet her and, and just encourage, uh, I guess, just thank her for, for that boldness and that, that action was pretty special. Well, we are really looking forward for Wings for Life this weekend. Get involved. You can run from wherever you are and support a great cause. And we'll be watching and cheering you on through 2024 and for all that you do. Thank and, you. Um, and thanks for sharing pictures of Levi because, ooh, he's so cute. Your son is so cute. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thankfully, he takes after his mama. And, and he will be out there 
on uh, on Sunday morning <laughs> okay. at 6.30. So Monday night brewing uh, on the, the west side, Monday night deck. So we'll be there. Um, come out, hang out, support. We'd love to, love to see you guys and uh, represent the Wings for Life. Awesome. We always love catching up with you, Jared. Thanks a lot. Cool. Thank Great you. Great to see you. Yeah, you too. <laughs>